And final race coming up here on Home Track Heroes on CW11 from Evergreen Speedway. And this segment is brought to you by Bardall, which is a family-owned business headquartered in Seattle. They're a technology-driven manufacturer, some of the best automotive lubricants in the world. Racers and champions around the world rely on Bardall. Let's uh, have Tom bring us the lineup uh, for our uh, participants in this uh, Pro Late model, 75 it, laps. 75 laps for the Speedway Chevrolet Pro Late models. Starting on the pole, it'll be the 7D of Dawson Cox. He'll have an in-car camera. Outside of him will be Daniel Bud Moore in the 16. In row two is the 37D of Dario Reddick, who's got two main event wins this year. He'll have an in-car camera. Outside Jeff Knight in the 70. Row three, it'll be 12C of Chad Fitzpatrick, who won last week when they ran. And outside in row three, it'll be the 18 car, our fast qualifier for the day, Tyson Lang. In the number 98 will be Greg Bennett. In the number 91 car will be Rob Dees. Out, out in the next row back, Wyatt Gardner. In the three, outside of Wyatt. In the 12B is Michael Brooks. Rounding out the field in the number 74 car out of Marysville, our friend Dan Beecher. So uh, Speedway Chevrolet bringing you this division again in 2020. Thank you so much to you guys, all of you, for being a big part of this. Interesting uh, thoughts, anything to kind of look for as uh, we wait for the pace car to pull off? Well, we talked about it earlier. Will youth be served again, or are the veterans going to come up and uh, put a little whooping on these kids? Yeah, and, and here's the, the way it's going. And we've got an equal mix of both in this one as well. I mean, Dawson Cox, this is his first year in it. Dario Reddick, that kid came out of nowhere and is really established. Well, and we're going to find out just how much of a prognosticator Steve Mortland <laughs> is because you said <laughs> last week when Chad Fitzpatrick won that the you know, first one was the hardest. He'll right. win more after that. Is he going to win another one today? We're going to find out here. 75 laps. We'll make up the distance as we are underway with a great start by the 16 Monroe Grocery Outlet car of Daniel Moore. Love the drone shot as a uh, positioned that thing right in the top of turn number three. But, man, what a first lap for Daniel Moore in the 16. Jeff Knight working the outside of Dawson Cox as Dawson takes the inside line side by side now for the second row and third row as they make their way back to Chad Fitzpatrick in the number 12. Mired back in the field. We are going to go on board with Dario Ooh. Reddick in the 37D. That was close. Yeah, Dawson Cox moved to the outside. Maybe didn't know that Tyson Lang was there. <laughs> Just about stuck him in the fence. Tyson had to back out of it. But you can see the different lines taken by different drivers. It tells you a little something about how their cars are handling. That's Tyson Lang outside right there in the blue, white, and orange car, that number 18 car, uh, a outstanding football player yeah. in, in his uh, senior year of high school coming you, up. You know, I got a sense from that shot out of the 37D of Ray. These cars look a little bit uncomfortable early on in this race. What? Any idea of what might be up? I know these guys have had a lot of downtime waiting for these races to get going. They don't do heat races, don't do trophy dashes. They just come out and do their 75 laps, but they're the last one. And I, it's kind of interesting to try and figure out what makes them a little bit twitchy early on. Well, part of that is that drivers don't know exactly what they have for a race car because once they put these tires on, they qualify, and that's it. They go back on the rack. They don't do anything else with them, so they have an idea, but not a great idea. they got to let the pressures come up in the tires. Heat builds pressure in the tire. It'll come up. Fuel load comes off. The, the chassis will start to change a little bit early on. But race cars, just Whoa. as a nature, <laughs> you're driving them to that ragged edge, and yeah. they're just going to be twitchy on you. Dario Reddick kicked up a little dust going down the back stretch as he got the right side a little bit off track. Let's see if he keeps it on the asphalt this time. Jeff Knight, definitely the fastest cars. We've got a car spun, and that is the 12B of Michael Brooks, and he'll get that thing hopefully turned back around. There you go. Nice job, Mike. There's a little bit of damage on the right side of that number 12 B car. So uh, good looking run early on by Daniel Moore, former champion in the in the super late model division, family run operation and and this going to this pro late model division with the type of tire and the, the sealed motors has what's allowed Daniel Moore to come back out. No, you're right. And he would uh, very, very much like to reestablish himself as one of the favorites yes. here yeah. at the Speedway. And so 
a win would help do that tonight. Right. Let's see how Dario Reddick does. As Tom mentioned, a two-time winner so far in 2020 in the Speedway Chevrolet Pro Late Models here. And uh, see if he can get this thing moved up a little bit. At his front row, it is Daniel Moore and Jeff Knight with Tyson Lang on the outside of the uh, 37 car that you are behind the wheel of right now as they go down the back stretch. The quality of these in-car camera shots. And that reminds me, too, if any of you uh, guys have any really cool in-car footage from the, the past race, send it to uh, Evergreen Speedway. Let them know what, obviously, what car you're in and what lap uh, the shot that you've sent them. And they'll do their best to get it on. It really makes for an interesting dynamic. Look at this wad coming out of turn number four. <laughs> Holy cow. That in-car camera was great. You could see that car bouncing around. Yeah. They yeah. run a shock package, a spring package, that really they coil bind it or whatever. They tie it down so hard it bounces more than floats through. Not a comfortable thing to drive. It's not like driving down the freeway. It's a rough ride right now, but it's the fastest way to go. Lang, looking like a good race car. You watch that thing right around the bottom of the racetrack as he dives in to turn three right now in the second spot all over Daniel Moore. Fitzpatrick in that 12 car just scooted the 70 out just a little bit and will be in the third spot as they come off of turn two. Dario Reddick right underneath the bumper cover of the 12 of Chad Fitzpatrick. I think it's important to notice or to mention too that these cars don't have shock absorbers on. Whoa, just, whoa Reddick in the back that. of the 70 car. Jeff Knight gets turned around here on uh, lap number 12. Let's see if you got that thing fired back up and it's moving under its own power. But to kind of continue my thought, these cars don't have shock absorbers on them as a comfort. <laughs> they have it on as a, I mean, it really affects the performance of them. No, you're, you're absolutely uh, spot on in what you're saying there because those things are not designed for comfort. They're designed to be fast and they'll yep. do whatever they need to do, even if the driver really isn't very happy with it. And right now you've got Daniel Moore, kind of a veteran. Then you've got two young kids, Jeff Knight, who's got a lot of years here at Evergreen Speedway, and then a couple of young kids right behind it. Greg Bennett, who's been here many, many years. Greg's probably not happy with his race car right now because this thing is not run like a typical Greg Bennett race car, but they're coming down into a turn three, off a turn four. They'll see the green flag here as they accelerate down the front straight away, and it'll be Daniel Moore with Tyson Lang on his hip. Boy, Tyson Lang had absolutely the best restart of his career, and look at that, just right off the high shelf on turn number two and down the back stretch and into the lead with uh, number 18 car of Tyson Lang, the young man out of uh, Snohomish, has got Daniel Moore right behind him, a good battle side by side. As we say that, they kind of take care of that particular comment as they go down into turn number three with a bit of an advantage to the 12 of Chad Fitzpatrick. And it'd be kind of cool uh, to, to find out from uh, Chad and his bunch where they found that one little tweak they had to make in that thing to really make it perform. Well, you, you know, they have worked so hard on that car. As you see Knight fly down on the outside there into turn three, and they have been good. They just haven't been consistently good. A and you know, that win, as you said, the first one seems to be the toughest, but man, every time you put, you know, your, your stamp on somebody, right. they're in trouble. Yep. So and hopefully you didn't do that to <laughs> Fitzpatrick tonight. Well, we'll find out. We've got uh, 61, 60 laps now to figure that one out. You can see Lang opening up a nice eight car advantage. He's got a spotter upstairs that may be telling him lap times, telling him how far out in front he is. Okay, we really don't need to go much faster than we're going right now. You're just out there where we want to be by yourself. Get some good laps, hit your marks, constantly reminding him of things to keep him focused and in the game, uh, you know, lap after lap. Reddick now has moved up into spot number three behind Daniel Moore and Tyson Lang with a nice move around the 12 of Chad Fitzpatrick as they settle in now. We're going to kind of at that point in the race where we're still fairly early on, but now these guys have got kind of a bit of a situation where they need to, to kind of figure out how do I want to 
do this because they break it down into sections I imagine I'll take lap 0 to 10 to, to kind of figure out what I've got and then I'll go from lap 10 to maybe 40 to figure out what I'm going to do with it and then I've got 35 laps to make it happen you really think drivers think yeah huh? <laughs> no you're, you're right you're right you know th they're being reminded of where they are on the racetrack how many laps they've run and what they want to accomplish you know the nice thing is these race cars will change as it goes along and maybe it's not what you want early on uh, but it'll get better as the run goes a lot of times so if it starts off bad it's just going to go get worse before, yeah, the, before yeah. the night is over. But right now, Tyson Lang doing a great job running 17-1, 17-2s. That's a pretty darn good lap time here at Evergreen Speedway. Daniel Moore in that second spot, Reddick into third. Uh, just, you know, go back about 10 laps ago. Fitzpatrick looked like he had one of the best cars on the racetrack. Right now, he's kind of settled into a distant fourth. So it'll be interesting to see if that car livens up as the race goes along. Tyson Lang just wailing away on this field. He just gets about two or three car lengths every lap. Obviously, turning 17, 2, 9, 17, 3, 3, 1. Um, he's going to be able to keep that advantage going. We could see another first time winner in this division in 2020. Hopefully, uh, Tyson Lang can pull that one off. But Dawson Cox is hungry for a win, and nobody more hungry. Then the driver of the 98, Greg Bennett. And I was talking with his son, Doug, uh, while they were getting these things lined up. And he's saying, man, we just, the, 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 they started out so fast this year and started out so good. And nobody has bought more practice time out here than Greg Bennett has. And they just keep toiling away on that 98. It's a brand new car to him. Uh, they absolutely love the way it started off. But they're just kind of in that mid-season funk that they will get this thing figured out. Well, well I'm positive we'll see that 98 uh, getting better here. Let's get inside Dawson Cox's car here. He's got a lot of toys to play with there. You can see he's got four gauges there, the tack below it, that little red knob right off his right hand. That's the brake balance adjuster. Off to the extreme right hand side, you can see the gear shift lever. Next to that is the switches, the kill switches, the things that turn off and on. You can see the wires going out of the, the ignition boxes into the uh, engine compartment. And there is Tyson Lang with almost a well above a half a straightaway lead over the second place car at Daniel Moore. And that's got to be kind of just, you know, heartbreaking for Daniel to just see that number 18 just keep pulling away and... and now he said, man, I really need a caution so I can see if I can do something with that kid because he's just destroying this field. So that's where his spotter will come into play and say, okay, listen, we're only at lap 28. We've got 47 to go if I did my math correctly. So we got plenty of time. And then, you know, if you, it gets later and later, then you just keep praying for a caution and <laughs> one chance to maybe use the uh, chrome horn, the chrome bumper, as you will. To, to change the outcome of the race. But right now, Tyson Lang just driving away from the field. Yep. Jeff Knight, who was up there running in the top three or four, has slipped back into the spot number seven. So uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see. Of course, he had to go to the back, you know, because he was spun out there and see if he can get that thing back up front. At what point now is uh, Tyson Lang's spotter, which I'm assuming is his dad name, I might be wrong, but there's got to be a point where he says, you know, you're kind of, you know, not stinking up the show, but you might want to dial it down just a little bit because we've got 45 more laps to go. We have a car just going off oh, turn look at that. two, the oh, 74. Oh, Dan. No. Dan Beecher. Yeah. Dan Beecher pulled in. He thought he saw a 7-Eleven over there. was going to pick up a Slurpee. And <laughs> no. So good to see Dan back out here. He, he just brings so much class to this place, as all these guys do. But, uh, you know, as we've been talking about, it has been the Tyson Lang show early on. In but this. this is exactly what you were going to, is how far out do you want to yes. be? Yeah. And now he's going to have cars right beside him, right behind him, and maybe he'll wish that maybe he took just a little <laughs> better care of those Hoosier racing tires. Well, we'll see how it goes as they are lined up behind our Speedway Chevrolet Chevrolet Camaro. And it will pull in and we'll see if Tyson Lane can uh, have another one of those quality restarts like he did last time to get the lead in this one. Daniel Moore up on the outside. Let's see if that 
Wiley veteran can keep that young lion in check here as we get back underway. Redding got that fender inside of Daniel Moore, hoping to gain that number two spot, take advantage of that start. That start. Moore on the outside, not quite far enough yet to get that clear sign from his, spot, his spotter. If he turns left now, it's not gonna work out well for either one of them. So Moore stuck on that outside. Outside, longer way around, a little tougher on tires. You know, as he works off of turn two down the back stretch, his spotter say inside, inside. He's look, waiting for that clear sign so that he can turn left and head to the bottom. All right, Tyson Lang just checking out one more time here on lap number 33. That's a nice shot coming out of turn number two. Reddick really got up high, and boy, did that one cost him as he uh, will move back behind Daniel Moore with a nice job of getting around him. That one really hurt Reddick a lot. We'll see how far down he drops when they get the scoring loop down around and uh, that put him down. Yeah, he lost two spots in that one there. Just, just because of going up high, we've got Rick Dees in the 91 car spinning into turn number one. We'll take a break. We'll be back here at Evergreen Speedway. 